So far, we understood ideal MOS cap and its modes of operations, accumulation, depletion, and inversion, and its threshold voltage and the inversion charge that's present in the semiconductor at the interface of oxide. And then we saw the capacitance voltage characteristics. And entire thing that was discussed was for an ideal MOS diode or MOS capacitor. And in fact, the assumptions that we made, if you remember, let me write it down again, that the first assumption we made was the work function of metal was equal to work function of semiconductor. This was in case of ideal MOS cap. And the second assumption was oxide has no charges. And the third assumption was oxide has infinite resistivity. And the fourth and the last assumption we made was no surface states at the silicon dioxide silicon interface. Now let's go through each of the assumptions and see in practical will that actually satisfy or not. So let me take the first one. Once the metal is decided, its work function is fixed. But the substrate doping, as it changes, the work function of the semiconductor changes. These two are not going to be equal in almost all the cases. So the first non-ideality, that is phi m will not be equal to phi s. And coming to the second one, oxide has no charges. But in reality, while fabricating or manufacturing, there will be some positive charges that would get trapped in the oxide. We'll see in the IEC technology uh, segment, when we discuss about oxidation process, we'll discuss about uh, why there will be charges in the oxide. So in reality, there will be charges in the oxide. So we're still going to assume that oxide has uh, infinite resistivity for the region of operations that we are concerned about. And we're still going to stick to this. And coming to the last one, no surface states at the silicon dioxide silicon interface. But in reality, this cannot be made zero. So there will be surface states. So in this section, what we're going to discuss is, so uh, let me put this, we are going to bypass this. In this section, we will discuss this first non-ideality and second non-ideality. And of course, once we understand charges in oxide, we can extend this to add even this to some extent. So this is slightly combined into two itself in our discussions. So overall, we're going to have two segments in this section itself. That is one, non-ideality is work functions are not same of metal and semiconductor. And charges in the oxide will be considered to see what happens to the MOS cap. So let's consider the first non-ideality, that is the work function of metal and work function of semiconductor are not same. In this case, let me draw the energy band diagrams for isolated metal, isolated semiconductor, and in between the oxide energy band diagrams. This is how the energy band diagram would look for isolated metal, isolated semiconductor, and oxide in between. Now, if you see here, I have taken uh, the phi m, the work function of metal is less than the work function of the semiconductor. Now, if you try to join these three materials, and in fact, of course, the actual MOS cap will not be actually made in that fashion. Just like how we discussed the PN junction, this is just a hypothetical way of trying to figure out how the equilibrium energy band diagram would be. So we know when we extend this and try to connect here, which means joining the three materials, when this MOS capacitor or MOS diode comes into equilibrium, the Fermi energy levels on either side should be aligned so that there is no net current flowing through this MOS capacitor. In fact, for that to happen, the energy of this semiconductor should increase and the energy of this one should decrease, which means there should be some electrons to be transferred from here to here. In other ways, some holes are taken out from the semiconductor. In that case, electron energy of this system would increase and this decreases. This can happen only if there was a connection to ground either in gate or semiconductor or together. 
In fact, while fabrication of MOS capacitor, they usually ground the substrates and other materials. So this is a very much possibility that it happens so that in equilibrium, the entire MOS capacitor would be still charge neutral. So let me draw the energy band diagram, taking that Fermi energy levels will align. This is EF in metal and this is EF in the semiconductor. And we know these two are like the anchor points. And this relatively, these two should be moving, they should be moving down, they should be moving up to align themselves. So in that case, this should be tilting this way. So let me draw that figure here. So the oxide energy band diagram would look like this, where this is tilted. Now we need to figure out how is EBEC here. So if you look at this, we know that electric field inside a material relationship with respect to EC EV is given by 1 over Q times del EC over del X. If you look at this slope, this is positive with respect to distance, which means electric field is actually in this direction. So obviously, if electric field is in this direction, even in semiconductor, it will be in this direction. In order to have even the electric field inside the semiconductor in this direction, the slope of the band here should be like this. So I'm going to draw the energy band diagram, taking that into account. And the vacuum energy level would be like this. So this is Q times phi M and this is Q times phi S. In this case, we can see this MOS capacitor under equilibrium is already in depletion mode because phi M is less than phi S. So to start with at VGS equals to zero, we are in depletion region already. But the way we deal with this non-idealities is by making sure we have a very good reference point that is ideal MOS cap. So we started ideal MOS cap in the condition where the bands in the semiconductor were flat, which was called the flat band condition, which means in an ideal MOS cap, let me write it here, ideal MOS cap at VG is equal to zero, we had flat band condition. So when we say flat band condition, the bands in semiconductor are flat. If you look at this at VG equals to zero, the bands in the semiconductor are not flat. So what we're going to do is because of this non-ideality, how much potential we have to apply externally to make sure this band becomes flat, then we can apply ideal MOS cap characteristics, everything beyond that point. So we need to find the potential that we apply across this non-ideal MOS cap, wherein the bands in the semiconductor would become flat. That applied potential is called the flat band voltage. And that is a very important parameter. So let me write it here. That is called VFB is the potential to be applied to bring energy bands to flat band condition in semiconductor. Looking at this figure itself, we can figure out how much potential to be applied. Assuming that the bulk is already grounded, the potential that we have to apply at gate to make sure that the bands in the semiconductor becomes flat. So in order to do that, we need to apply a VG that is equal to phi M minus phi S. So let me say that again, the flat band voltage that we need to apply externally will be equal to phi M minus phi S, which is also equal to phi M S. So this will be the flat band voltage. And let me explain what it means. So if you observe here, phi M minus phi S in this case is negative. So when we apply negative potential here, this Fermi energy level would move up with respect to this. So how much should we apply here so that it moves to a point where this becomes flat is the flat band potential or flat band voltage. And of course we know, if you see here, the difference between these two was phi M minus phi S was negative. Once you allow it to 
come to equilibrium the fermi energy levels have actually come at same level here now in order to get them back to this level so that we get the flat band condition in the semiconductor we have to apply exactly the potential difference of phi m to phi s that's why the flat band voltage is phi ms which is equal to phi m minus phi s so this is a very important parameter so moving on to the second non ideality which is charges are present in the oxide so in this case i'm going to take the charge distribution like this metal oxide and semiconductor we are assuming that there is some charge in the oxide so i'm taking the charge is present here let's say this charge is q ox i'm assuming it is positive with respect to x we always take this as the origin and this distance is thickness of oxide and i'm taking this charge is present at x not this charge would look in two dimension as line charge but in reality in three dimension it is a surface charge when you have a system with net positive charge it would try to get negative charge from the materials which it touches or let's say metal or semiconductor gets in touch with ground in ic fabrication most of the cases we tend to ground the wafers so that we don't have any extra charges present in the materials so hence when the semiconductor or metal gets into contact they actually try to get negative charge so that this entire system would become charge neutral which means when we have positive charge in the oxide which is fixed assuming that we would get some negative charge in the metal and some negative charge in the semiconductor the way we can have a negative charge in a p type substrate is by some level of depletion and you can have a question that what if it already entered into inversion as well of course we are going to model everything with flat band voltage just like we model the first non ideality once we find the flat band voltage it doesn't really matter in fact we'll see in a moment why it doesn't matter if it has entered depletion or inversion or whatever mode it has so we have some charge in the gate and some charge in the semiconductor now the electric field for this case would look like of course just a reminder that uh, electric field is actually written as integration of rho v over epsilon times dx so when we integrate this value is negative impulse so we get a step kind of a function but once we approach x not there is a positive charge which is higher than this negative charge obviously because this positive charge should be equal to this plus this value so we get electric field like this and once it reaches this interface we have this boundary condition where it should drop and by the time it reaches this edge of depletion region the electric field should drop to zero now if you are interested you can find the potential distribution as well and of course it will start at zero and end at zero so that you don't have a potential difference across metal and semiconductor to start with now the question is the way we studied ideal mos cap was when we started at vgs equals to zero the semiconductor was in flat band condition when we say flat band which means it was not in accumulation it was not in inversion or depletion it was neutral throughout the semiconductor so that is the condition we want to get to to get to that condition how much gate potential we have to apply that potential is called the flat band potential or flat band voltage now we need to find how much voltage we have to apply to make sure the energy band diagram in the semiconductor is flat or it is not in any of the modes like accumulation depletion or inversion it is neutral the bands are flat to get to that condition let me take we have applied some potential we have applied already some potential vg to the system assume in such a way that the entire negative charge that is required to equate to this positive charge in the oxide is accommodated in the metal the only way this can happen is if the voltage that we applied was negative right we have to keep that in mind it has to be negative so that we get negative charges here extra negative charges so that there is no requirement of depletion to happen in the semiconductor so let me draw that diagram assuming we have applied vg exactly equal to that potential so that there is no depletion at all in the semiconductor wherein the energy band diagram would be flat in the semiconductor now let's say because of this potential applied which is negative we get this extra negative charge which in total 
gets equated to this one so that there won't be any depletion that happens in the semiconductor. Now, if you look at this scenario, that from positive charge to negative charge, we had electric field this way, hence electric field was negative, and from here to here, it is positive with respect to x in direction. Hence, we had positive electric field here. Now, if you look at this scenario, when we integrate to find out what is the electric field, we would get negative, and it will be constant until we reach x0, and it becomes zero beyond this point. So electric field would be in this direction, which will be negative, hence we got it in negative direction. So this is volume charge distribution density. And this is electric field distribution. Once we know how is the electric field, we can find what is the potential. So a potential distribution can be found with minus integral E bar dot DL. Now we know that electric field here is negative. So negative of negative is positive. When we integrate this, we get something like this, linear, till this point, and afterwards, it will be constant. But if we observe that substrate or body is always grounded, which means our reference, which is like the boundary condition, this is actually equal to zero potential, which means the gate potential that we have applied to make sure that there is flat band condition in the semiconductor is in fact negative value this potential would be equal to the flat band potential and this value should be negative so let's see what that value would be this is nothing but the flat band voltage equal to minus of because we know it should be a negative potential times the magnitude of the electric field here the magnitude of the electric field here would be q ox divided by epsilon ox because when we integrate this with rho v over epsilon we get this condition times x naught because the area under this curve would be the difference in potential which is nothing but magnitude of e ox times x naught is the area here so we get the flat band voltage q ox over epsilon ox times x naught which can be written as minus q ox over epsilon ox times x naught times t ox over t ox this can further be written as minus q ox over epsilon ox over t ox is c ox prime times x naught over t ox. So finally, the flat band voltage can be written as flat band voltage that we have to apply. If there is a positive charge in the oxide, we have to apply negative potential that is minus q ox over c ox. And of course here, q ox is charge per unit area that we are considering here hence we have to put q ox prime here because the units satisfy it has to be charge per unit area and c ox is also prime times x naught over t ox this is the flat band voltage that has to be applied when there is q ox charge in the oxide to make sure we have a flat band condition in the semiconductor at the starting of the non-ideality section, we have discussed that interface trap can be modeled to some extent by using this equation itself, which means this charge would be somewhere at the surface, which means X naught would be T ox, T ox, T ox cancel. Then you would have flat band voltage as minus Q ox prime over C ox prime. Now we can consider both the non-idealities here that because of the first non-ideality, the flat band voltage we have seen which was equal to phi ms, which is equal to phi m minus phi s. So this is the first flat band voltage due to the first non-ideality considered. Now coming to the second non-ideality where charges are present in the oxide, where we found the flat band voltage was equal to minus q ox prime over c ox prime times x naught over t ox. So this is the second non-ideality. In fact, we have considered both the non-idealities in isolation, which means when non-ideality one was considered, second was not considered. And when we were considering the second one, first one was not considered. So that we understand these two individually in a better way. But obviously we'll have both the non-idealities together. In that case, the flat band voltage we have to apply to make sure we get 
the energy band diagram in the semiconductor flat to start with is the flat band voltage should be equal to the flat band voltage because of the first non ideality plus the flat band voltage because of the second non ideality which is phi ms plus we have minus here q ox prime or c ox prime times x naught or t ox so this will be the overall flat band voltage because of both the scenarios this is due to work function difference and this is due to charges in the oxide now having said that there is a flat band potential or flat band voltage that we have to apply to make sure the semiconductor under the oxide becomes neutral where it is not in accumulation depletion or inversion the bands are flat so if that becomes our starting point if you remember in ideal mos diode the threshold voltage was given by square root of 2q epsilon si n a 2 phi f phi f is the fermi potential which talks about the doping concentration divided by c ox prime plus 2 phi f this was the threshold voltage when the MOS cap was ideal which means it started from the flat band condition so but in a non-ideal or practical MOS cap we have work functions not same and charges present in the oxide so because of these two non-idealities we have to apply a potential of VFB flat band voltage to make sure it comes to that flat band condition and then if we apply this threshold voltage on top of flat band voltage we would get to the threshold voltage actually in practical MOS diode so we call the new threshold voltage this is for ideal MOS cap or MOS diode now we write this this is VFB plus this entire formula which is 2q epsilon si na times 2 phi f over c ox prime plus 2 phi f so this is the new threshold voltage which is considering non-idealities which means this is practical mos cap with of course these two non-idealities accounted into picture and we know what is the overall flat band potential of voltage that is this value this is very important and this threshold voltage is very important now this is the real MOS cap where you have non-idealities accounted in the flat band voltage this is due to non-idealities this was the threshold voltage in ideal condition that we have seen here ideal MOS cap now having understood the threshold voltage in a practical or non-ideal MOS cap what will happen to the CV characteristics which was one of the most important topic we had CV characteristics like this this is potential and this is capacitance and we had in ideal MOS cap the characteristics like this this I'm considering the high frequency CV characteristics in this case we had threshold voltage somewhere here in ideal MOS cap now let's consider that only 2 is present which means the first non-ideality is not there just for example right so only second non-ideality is there which means only second non-ideality and q ox prime is positive let's say then the practical threshold voltage would be given by this where flat band potential is this here we are assuming the first non-ideality is not present which means phi ms is zero in that case assuming x naught is also not zero then we would have a negative value here vfp would be negative if we add that negative value here this is the threshold voltage of ideal MOS cap to that we are subtracting a value then what happens is threshold voltage would decrease so let me draw the new characteristics so the new threshold voltage would be somewhere here only with the second non-ideality that we have seen here now let's see the 
another situation that is only first non ideality that is phi ms is present okay let's say phi ms is positive in this case let's say phi ms is positive if phi ms is positive only first non ideality is present which means second non ideality we are not considering so let's say this is not there only this is there where phi ms is given positive hence with respect to ideal mosquet threshold voltage we are going to add some value in place of flat band potential or flat band voltage then the new threshold voltage with only the first non ideality would move in this direction which means the new cv characteristics would move or shift to the right and of course here if we assume negative it would go the other way and if we had assumed even the oxide charge negative it would this red curve would have gone the other way so understanding this non idealities and the flat band voltage will help us understand what happens to the cv characteristics with respect to an ideal mos diode and the same thing what happens with the q inversion prime is given by minus c ox prime times vg minus vth obviously the q inversion the amount of inversion charge per unit area depends on the threshold voltage here if threshold voltage is actually changing because of flat band potential obviously the inversion charge would also change